Right, what an exciting day it's been for us all here at Grassmen. Uh, we're in England, we're, we're at an undisclosed location. Um, by the time you see this here, um, this here machine behind us will officially have been launched. I think it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty clear um, what's going on here. There's a new machine, there's new detailing, there's a new design around the black. The lovely black panels will not get into that. The secret of what this machine's called uh, is in the number plate and also there should be a little bit of a giveaway just at the top there. As you can see the two exhausts coming out now. What I'm going to do, um, I've been out here, uh, we've been driving the machine and we've been sitting in beside uh, Ross coming from John Deere, that's his job. We're going to invite him here now and we're going to take a wee walk round her whenever she's parked up. Right, we're with the main man Ross, just very briefly, who are you, what are we doing here today? Okay, so my name's Ross Skimming, I'm Harvest Territory Sales Manager for John Deere, I uh, work for John Deere, That's fancy. covering the harvesting equipment, anything with really big wheels at the front, as we've coined the phrase today, SPFH, combines and large square balers as well. I just did, 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 did leave that with the introduction done now, what's this? <laughs> Get scared, tell it. I think what we're all here to see, we're not here to see a large square baler by any means, it's the new 9.8. It's the second from the top uh, machine. We have uh, a new series, the 9000 series, yeah. and we have a 9.7, 9.8, and a 9.9. They're all running a different plant. Yes, I think there's, there's two things that give it away that we're looking at here. Two pretty big uh, exhausts shows that it must be something different lying underneath the bodywork and today we're going to have a look at it and see what, see yeah. what uh, we find. So this is the, the real interest here is in this new engine but we're going to get, I'm going to ask you Ross to, to open up because there still will be a 9.6 available mm -hmm. but that's common with the standard 13 half litre engine. <laughs> yeah, we're tails into insignificance when we see this. Insignificant, open so, her up I think with your bare hands. The big reveal, as you can see from the back, this is not a 13 half litre. We have a 24 litre V12 Lieber engine. This is the new power plant for... It takes that to fill the bag of that harvester, you know. It does. It's, but you can tell, look, even with a big power plant like that in the back, there's still room either side. All service uh, opportunities, very easy for the guys to get to. So it's not as if we've had to squeeze it in. This machine was designed always for an engine of this size to go in it. This here's running something that we thought wasn't needed in the big engine. That's right, so Cummins engines, they were tier two. Now, that was a great thing for 760 horsepower and above. They were uh, not compliant to final tier four emissions, which meant that they could uh, run a very simple system yeah. uh, that didn't require AdBlue to meet emission yeah. regulations. Yeah. Unfortunately, going into 2019, that's all changed and even those bigger uh, horsepower are have to come in line with the emission regulations set out for final tier four. So. We're saving the environment. Yes. We've got a very clean engine, a very clean burning engine. But what, 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 you've, what you've done here, from what I can look, is there's no, there's no filters. Um, we're running that. This obviously is a, a pressurized ad blue system, working with air and all the rest to get it pressured. So she'll be using a relative amount of ad blue. There's no DPF filter. This is purely SCR, so that's AdBlue uh, being added into the exhaust gas to treat it, to after treat it once it's out of the engine. But that means the engine's always breathing clean. Yeah, well it's always, and it's always given out clean air as well. So yeah. you're not gonna get black smoke like you do in a Cummins. You won't get that. That's the whole reason for Final Tier 4 to get rid of that, uh, that suit, reduce the amount of NOx yeah. coming yeah. out of the yeah. exhaust as well. Right, so we'll open up this side panel and we get a better view of the V12 from the side. As you see, unobstructed view. If this was a, a normal, this was a, an 8.6 or smaller, that was final tier four, would have a, an ad blue stack here. Is there really 12 in there? One, two, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, yep, there is. They're all in there. 
It's a very, very impressive uh, engine. Obviously, longitudinal engine as yep. usual. Mm -hmm. um, on and up, through its gearbox, that's where the magic happens. Yep. I'm going to let you explain the magic. So, looking at the, the V12 engine, it's wholly different characteristics to a normal, uh, maybe a John Deere engine. Let's compare it to, or even the Cummins, you know. What happens in this V12 is it's got all its power is rated at 1600 RPM. Now that's a big change from what engines we've got currently in our lineup. Usually it's rated around 2100. So that output shaft from the, from the engine is spinning at a different speed to what our gearboxes are used to. Yeah. But instead of making the engine rev up higher, that's not what we want to do. We want to ensure the engine is still within its maximum torque range and maximum power range. And that happens between 14 and 1800 RPM. So therefore, having an engine rev up to 2100 RPM does us no favours. Therefore, we needed to make a gearbox or change the ratios within the gearbox to ensure the cutter head is spinning at the same speed and the, the header drive components and all the pumps are getting enough oil flow, but still maintain that maximum torque at, in that uh, RPM range. So what we've done is we've adjusted the ratios in the gearbox to ensure that we, we match, match it up. And to be honest, it gives you a completely different driving experience. Hmm. As, uh, <laughs> well, loosely, loosely speaking, I'm going to try and put this into a very simple language. Um, the maximum power of this engine is at 1400 RPM, but the maximum torque of that V12 is actually lower, is, is at 1300. Yep. So technically, that machine will chop all day long happily at 1300 RPM. Yep. Traditionally, at 1300 RPM with a chopper. Now, I, not, not many guys driving a chopper would be happy to hold it at 1300 RPM too long, but that's where the magic is, because I was watching you push it up there. Our cameras will see this. You were happily at 15, 14, 50 foot swords of grass, and that drum was still running between 1120 and 1160, 70 RPM at that very low maximum rev at 18, which again is a is a hard one to get into your head. The yep. maximum rev of the engine is 18, yep. and the drum's still running at 1300. So yes, having driven John Deere, I can say, I call it magic. You call it engineering. Yeah. <laughs> Very good engineering. <laughs> and that that's that's what's happening there, and that's what's getting the real benefit of the V12. Um, I don't know unofficially or officially, I'm not sure where this is, but what I can say is, this is going to be, officially this is the machine to replace the 88. Mm -hmm. That's the that's officially what the 90 is going to be. Unofficially, test data done by yourselves, this, the fuel efficiency of this is in a different league. Exactly. To the 88. Yep. And that, that's that been done, now. I'm sure that'll end up going and getting tested and we'll see more and more talk about that through trials or whatever. Yep. So we've got out to the power band, we've got running down the belt. Is there anything else new we need to talk about? Well, I think one thing is very obvious when you see this. Now you've got all that power, it has to go through somewhere. And you can't just put the same belt as we had on before. We've had to make that bigger and it is super impressive. We have a nine ribbed drive belt here going all the way to the front to drive the cutter head. We need this belt there to transfer that torque and it is mighty impressive. Another thing, I suppose, this engine creates a lot of heat. You can explain for slightly different cooling package. Yeah, so we've got, we've had to, it's got very similar cooling package to what was on the X8s before. We've just added two more air filters on the top. Uh, again, longitudinally mounted engine requires less cooling, it's proven. Therefore, at the end of the day, even with a V12, we didn't have to add much to make sure we get the, keep that V12 cool. And with the new styling, I know this new style looks good, but there's functional benefits to it as well. It allows that heat to escape quicker. What? I thought that was just nice back and black and all that. And if I thought you'd learned your lesson from Rosie. <laughs> I thought you'd learned all that and you knew that black was cool. You're telling me it's functional. It is functional, oh. believe it or not. There's engineering behind that donkey, honestly. One thing I have noticed, and I'm standing right beside it here, now people that know me know I have a fascination with tires. Yep. I am looking at a tire, and I said to you, one of the first things I said to you is, I have never seen that Michelin tire before. Yep. To which point you turned back and you went, this is the music for me. <laughs> but that's that's a brand new tire. It is, it's uh, again, working within, with Michelin. We, we wanted a, a tire 
that has IF capabilities, but also in a 650, 60 and 34 inch rim. Now the 34 inch rim is important for us because again, long rim, so a big rim, so it gives you a long footprint, but also helps with turning circle, maneuverability, and just uh, because it's ultra flex, we can take the pressure yeah. right down. Yeah, ultra flex and that, and I was just briefly checking there earlier on, yep. 165D, so it's, it's there, it can carry the weight and it's got the speed rating. And we're going to go to the front tyre now because that's different again. Yep. So another thing I spied, and one of the first questions I asked you, she running what we call road legal 3.2 and you said yes. And then straight away, I'm like, how is that possible? Yep. I've never seen. Well, again, this is something that we've uh, redesigned for uh, the, the 9000 series, but it will be available uh, throughout the range, is, uh, is a new rim to allow an 800 70 42. So before, if we had a 710 70 or 42, it would be 3.2 meters wide. Now, with a bit of clever engineering, I'll always come back to that, we've allowed to get an 800, a really big tire in this class, but still maintaining that 3.2 yeah. to 3.3. Uh, but it's not width. just an 800, it's an 870 by 42 that's a big footprint, yep. both ways, you've got width and you've got the circumference and it's also, granted it's not a Michelin in the front of this one, but it is also it's still into the, the, the ultra flex technology or whatever you want. Now I have, I have realised one thing and I've seen it straight away, I liked it very much, yep. the steps is all redesigned I thought that was quite cool how we just slipped up in there. I was a wee bit disheartened as to where I was going to sit to eat my lunch. But um, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> this here is now all tank. Yep. Um, there are a few wee differences to the head mm -hmm. that have been rolling in over the couple of years. So we'll go around and look at the header. But this is the latest and greatest header offered by Kemper. It um, came out, I suppose, on the X8. It's running... It's a lot more beefed up. Yes. Pines used to be on average, was it four mil? Yep. You've beefed them up now to what? Over six mil tines, thick tines. Six, six and a half mil yep. tines. You're running them in two bars across instead of it's one whole split bar. Split pickup reel, yeah, that's right. There's a phenomenally large proportion of flagship machines running around Ireland. No. Eight, it's, seven and eight eights. Oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, even to this year, Kemper continually visit Northern Ireland to, to view how their headers are performing in those, as we, as we all know, some of the toughest conditions in the UK and Ireland. And a lot of the developments, a lot of the changes that have came in this header is directly from the feedback of our customers, from especially that area, to be honest. And you can see, like we can all see, it's a premium, as you can see on the side, a premium header, 639 premium. That gives us, that straight away it knows you're the heavy duty version. It's not the standard version, it's the heavy duty we wouldn't want anything else on the front of the X9s. It would be a premium pickup no matter what. Just because of the physical throughput that these things can, are capable of, we would need a premium pickup on the front. So that means big times, uh, if I'm correct, the correct terminology is, pos you have still the option of, is it dual line wear parts? Dual line wear parts, yep. So premium header comes with dual line wear parts for the main crop flow components. Like the machine, we can have a fully dual line machine, so it's uh, hard ox, plates all the way through it, uh, the extended wear life, which is very popular now with customers, especially in the north. And then, for instance, in, even in the header here, anything, if we opened up the header, we will see, but anything that's silver, any parts in there that are silver, that means they are dual line parts with the extended yeah. warranty. But then coming from the machine, so we've come up this big belt, we've took all our power from that big V12 engine, we've brought it up to the region of the front. We now have the, we have the drum engaged, we, we have the drum engaged, the drums going, all 32 knives are flat out. We have the crop accelerator, which is the same, same drum, same accelerator as was on the 8. Everything else coming up is, is technically the same. Um, I think just maybe beefed up a little exactly. bit. Um, yeah. That's fine. But you're still running the same, technically the same system where it's oil driven. Yep, absolutely. So we run now a hydraulically driven uh, our front end is completely hydraulically driven, mm -hmm. whether it be the pickup reel, mm -hmm. which is, uh, matches your forward speed, and that's hydraulically driven by those two pipes up there. But also the main thing and where we get our superior feeding uh, performance <coughs> is the drive shaft that's the bottom left-hand corner of the header is driven by a hydraulic pump at the back. And that hydraulic pump allows us to, as soon as you alter the chop length, the feed rollers change speed, but then 
also the auger matches that speed as well. So if you leave it in auto, in the screen up there, and you decrease your chop length from 14 down to five, not only would the feed roller slow down, but the auger will slow down too, and ensuring you get that supreme feeding performance that we've seen today, and I think Donkey can vouch for that, even in the toughest lumps, it performs extremely well. It's, a, it's effectively the same system, mm -hmm. but user continually with Kemper yep. modifying it. And I know for a fact, just when he was saying that about Kemper and Ireland, I know for a fact um, Kemper were actually at a customer's that we've been filming with an 88 already this yep. season, doing their research on the header and chatting to them about the header. That's so, I mean, what the man's saying is true, and that is, that's what Kemper are, are, are at, and they're trying to get it better. Um, your uh, crop flow on this header, mm -hmm. you're working with cam, not camless, you're working with a cam track. Yep. Um, the distance, John Deere always claims that um, they've one of the shortest distances from picking the crop up to getting it to the feed rollers and yep. getting it that one of the shortest distances travel so um i think yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much true um from what i from what i can see as well anything else still reverse everything's the same reverse knife sharpening reverse sharpening automatic shear bar uh, adjusts we don't need to get out of the cab to do anything like that we've got lateral tilt on the header frame uh, as standard on any machine again full functionality we've got something called pro touch that will automatically put the spout away, fold the, the wheels and lift the crop press. Again, little things that make it very easy. Super. We'll go around this side for one last thing I want to talk about. We're getting the side view now and we're also getting the, the very special privilege of seeing the actual number. Ross is out earlier on peeling the wee tape over it for when you're moving it up and down the road, you have to try and keep it under wraps. But there's another little bit of newish. I don't know if it's completely new or newish innovation in this harvester and we're just able to look what's up over there. It's the harvest lab. Now, that's different from anything I've seen before. Yeah. Now, anyone that doesn't know what Harvest Lab 3000 means, it's, uh, it's our onboard NIR sensor, so our near-infrared sensor that analyzes grass constituents, base constituents on the go. It must be bigger than anything I've seen before. It's slightly bigger. It's yeah. It's maybe a different. It's packaged differently. It's slightly wider than it was before, which has meant the cover is a lot more. Can you flip the lid? Yep. Can you flip that lid? Because I was doing that earlier on. Flip you the lid and just let the camera get a wee look at what it actually is. This is one of the John Deere's big things that they've been pushing. John Deere's a company for the last I don't know how many years has really been pushing their like all this GPS and. And uh, you can see like the, the, the dish in the front and they're really getting into all this and the likes of the harvest and they believe that contractors and all needs to know the dry matter, can accurately tell the tonnage of the output of the material that's going through it. And that's something that I think you're going to see creeping into, uh, definitely it's creeping into the UK. I think you're even going to see it creeping more and more into the likes of Osmad Egypt's over in Ireland, where you're going to see more and more guys, more dairy farmers, biogas, demanding this sort of information. And John Deere are for sure have always been at the forefront of that. And that's exactly with the Harvest Lab. You can see he's flipped that lid up there. That's your big sensor. And really and truly, that's like all forms of infrared and all this kind yeah, of exactly. stuff that's going on in there. And what can it do? Briefly, briefly, to benefit me, I'm a big guy running a biodigester. I'm not, yep. I'm a big guy, but I'm, I'm not running a biodigester, but what can that do for me? How can that help my business? So for instance, your, your anaerobic, anaerobic digester guys, they want to know things like dry matter content. So straight away it tells us. Yeah, so straight away it'll tell you the dry matter content on the go as you're harvesting the grass. It'll also look at the quality of the grass. Now, straight away, uh, gas production, milk production is all related to how good the grass is. It's, it doesn't matter if it's the great volume, great tons, but it's not good stuff you'll not get milk out sugar the other end. Sugar content. Sugar content. Yeah. So we've got sugar content. We've also got protein content as well. And then the fibers, ADF, NDF. We can even tell how dirty the silage is as well. We can look at the ash content, which show, could maybe highlight maybe some problems within how you're raking it up. Uh, do you need to look at different practices? So yeah, there's plenty of opportunity to analyze that data. And tonnage, if you and, calibrate it regularly. That's right. So we can, with the moisture of the grass, then you know, and you calibrate the sensor on the forge or the mass flow sensor, that basically works by how far open the feed rolls are. That's, it'll, then it'll equate uh, how many tons is going through the machine, uses the moisture to tell how wet the grass is, so the water content within the grass, 
and that'll give you a tonnage reading at the end of the day. Well, that, that's exactly it, because dry matter, I mean, at the end of the day, um, it's a simple it's a simple mathematical equation. Dry matter equals uh, the amount of crop there minus the water. That's right. And uh, so that's, that's what they're doing. Have you run it, like, on long days ever in, in its life's history up against... Um, Someone that's weighing every load going into biomass, is it accurate or is it? Yeah, so if you if you calibrate that machine uh, between two times a day, you can be there and thereabouts with a, a weigh bridge at the end of the day. I'm talking, you'll probably be within 50 to 100 kilograms out at the end of the day, Whoa. which is more than acceptable uh, for guys that probably didn't know what was coming in. At the, uh, at but dairy farmers as well, look at last year in Ireland um, and, and there's not that long ago there was the floods here in the UK. I think it's information that, you know, the more switched on guys need to be trying to get. You're talking about 50 to 100 kilos of accuracy. I'm talking about, wouldn't it be nice to know when a guy left, I have 1,000 tonnes of silage in that. No one's going to argue about 50 to 100 or even no. a couple of 100 kilos. But you know you have a 1,000 tonne. You know the dry matter averaged 30% before you start. So yeah. you know exactly what you've got there. You know what you're feeding. You know you have 100 cows. You can budget straight away, start and look at your winter stock and not this mess of running out of silage. I think that's the future and the way it's going. Exactly. We're also fully equipped with... Um, I call it the GPS, but the Starfire, yep. the, but I don't know, do you use that much? So that, the, having the GPS, uh, having the Starfire 6000 receiver on this machine allows us to document it. So it allows us to, when we are traveling across the field, we're able to create yield maps. So we're using that information that the Harvest Lab's producing, and they're putting that onto a map. So at the end of the day, you can give your customers yield maps that will show them not only the quality of the grass, but where the the tonnage just came in their field. So they can actively see, oh right, there's a part of the field that's not doing so well, let's have a look at it. Is it because it's compaction? Is it because there's poor drainage? And make decisions based on the data that this John Deere Forge Harvester can produce. This technology is becoming easier to use. Mm -hmm. The fear factor is not what it was yep. five, six, seven, eight, nine years ago when people were like, I can't push buttons and they were hearing things beeping and <laughs> things were going off around and they weren't sure. That bit's, I think, what's making it easier. People can jump up in, yep. and they can. And you also have in that harvester, and it's out around the other side, you'll see the little bit of a green box. You can fill their loads yourself. Yeah, that's right. But. I mean, again, it's all to try and make, these are these are features that customers want to make their lives easier. Not all customers would, would need it. Uh, that's that's pretty clear, but we ha we do offer it. And yeah. you couple it up with Harvest Lab, the Gen 4. Yeah, look, we're, 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 we're really are setting the, the bar pretty high for SPFH. Well look, Ross, um, thanks very much for taking the day out with this. Uh, at this stage, it's, it's not prototype, but it's... it's no, it's, uh, it's, we would call it limited production build. This is a limited production build. LPB. That's right. This is an LPB machine. So thanks very much for a look at the limited production build. Um, officially released um, I know we shot this a little bit earlier on. All I want to say is, look, all the best with it. Uh, it's going to be a large part of your life now for the next few years. Yep. You've been with the X8 or the 8000 series since day one. You toured Ireland in the the the, the, the head-turning 8.6, I'll call it that for want of a better <laughs> word. You know exactly what I'm referring to. And um, thanks for inviting us down to get a wee look at it and uh, a wee drive in it. It does look the part. I'm very excited about this here. I mean, everybody knows at the end of the day, I like I like my dark green products. So, look, thank you much. And thank all you the very best much for coming. It. Thank you very much.